On today's Men of the Apes, we've got fan mail. No, no, it's got to be a lot more creative than that. How about like MailChimp? Wait, that's taken. Maybe Mailbag of the Apes. No. Uh, how about Monkey Mail? Oh, how about Poop Shooters? I, I think that's Kevin Smith. Poop. The Green Lit the Sequel. Without a story in mind. They just wanted to equal. An unexpected goal of mine. said, oh no, as Heston said, I got to go. These are just some of the facts you ought to know as we go. Beneath the minute of the apes. Beneath the minute of the apes. Beneath the minute of the apes. Hello, and welcome to Minute of the Apes, the daily podcast where we break down every minute of the Planet of the Ape movies one minute at a time. I'm Todd, and I have my email fantastic friends, Sean and Richard. We're like email in real life. <laughs> we are right so here. damn pumped because we have fan mail. What was it? What are we calling this? Monkey uh, mail? Monkey. I think Mailbag of the Apes is really there good. Go. Mailbag of the Apes? That sounds kind of weird. All, All right. right. So I'm going to start with one that's a little near and dear to my heart and it's it's a friend of mine i've said before that i do another podcast with named jeff we do one called the other kind where we just tackle real pop quick, culture real quick before we get into this hmm. to let people know if they don't already know we record these way way in advance i don't think this one will be coming out to like the end of september maybe beginning i mean maybe end of october potentially we're recording this in the middle of august, august. <laughs> well not everybody re- is listening to it necessarily weekly either yeah. so and that's fun it the because first time. yeah we'll have like saturdays where people the downloads go dramatically up and you know that people are binging the show on that yeah. day right. so that happens so without further ado let's at least go over what we we hear uh so i get from jeff longtime listener first time caller which, you know, come uh, on, Jeff, really. But anyway, he gives me not a, a thumbs up for great producing. T- quality is top notch. Richard, he wanted to know, what happened to the rest of the sex story you teased one time about seeing people fornicating in front of your store? You never paid it off. This was on a Today's Minute of the Age. <laughs> Somebody yeah, you- paid it off. Hey! <laughs> Okay, that's the end of story. That was good. Okay, here's Todd's tip for you in producing. When you when you give gold like that, just drop the mic and walk away. Fried gold. No, don't drop the mic though; they're expensive. All right, I won't. I won't. Well, you know what? In an in between, Jeff, we'll go into that story. Is that fair, Richard? Sure, sure. Right, so, sure. in an in between where we can actually get a little saucy, we'll have some fun with that. Saucy. Speaking of saucy, he says to Sean, "Keep up the cussing." Oh. Lo- I- <laughs> I love the monkey bleeps. Here's a word to the listener. Todd hates the monkey beeps because when, he, when he Sean and Todd to get going, it's like beep, 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 beep. I'm just waiting for you to have to edit that one episode from like a, like a week or two ago that Richard, we introduced the new the new monkey beeps in it. Yeah, I'm not too happy with y'all about that. When I looked at that and I said, I'm not touching that. So here's what I'll say about Jeff. Jeff was kind enough to be a guest on the show right before Richard joined. Jeff has asked if he can come back because he is, he actually has listened to every episode. The funny thing is I edit every, he's the one. Yeah. Well, Hey, (laughs) I'm going to be real fair. You guys keep saying that we actually have a pretty faithful little following. And I've not told y'all about numbers, and we'll get into that. I don't want to bore people off air because that sounds a little narcissistic. They are in the double digits. I Uh, swear. They're in more than that, my friend. (laughs) So Jeff actually made me listen to it one time, which was the oddest experience to have lived it, then hear it. Oh, listen. You don't listen to these? But I I edit them, and I I very I disengage myself, and all I'm listening for is cussing and balancing audio, and I'm not paying attention to content. Right. We don't suck. When I listen to it, I was like, (laughs) hey, we don't suck. So... Now we're going to shift gears, and I'm going to go to another. Joe Meebs has been a fan that has stuck with us. He has been one of our most uh, regular. Ardent. Ardent. That's a great Devoted. word. Hello, Joe. He is, he's is. he been there with us on social media. So he, he gives us a rather lengthy email that I'm like, dude, I, I love you so much for giving all this. So he basically said, hey, Sean. Well, I, we had been writing back Sean. a couple of times. Did you write this. back? Yeah. yeah, but it had been like over a course of a couple of months, like okay. December and stuff. So. so he actually knows these go to you. Yes. Joe, I love you for that. So I finally caught up with Beneath. This one is as good as the last one. I'm one of the few people in my circle of friends that cares this deeply about the film series. I try to show them how great the films are and his commentaries of the times in which we live. I suggest this podcast every time. I'm also trying to watch these one minute at a time with you guys. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, wow. you, dude, you are easily the most yeah. devoted. By the way, Jeff, you suck, dude. <laughs> Joe, he is the man. So... 
These are some Step of the up, com- Jeff. these are some of the comments and questions that he has after the first twenty nine uh, minutes. Uh, given the buffer, he doesn't know when these will fall. But yeah. he asked, "Could the human raid at the beginning of the first film be the beginning of a constant building set of raids where the crops were being stolen and ruined for the apes?" So he's basically tying together them decimating the crops in the first film with the- to this, and that's a great idea. We, I just wouldn't have minded seeing it again, again in this didn't, film. Didn't we suppose that possibly the first film there were setups to try and capture the humans? Yes, we did. Like so we would have almost safari. needed to have had a second scene where we see them raiding crops, and then we see a setup for them to raid the crops. Because right. the apes seem rather jovial. Remember, they're taking pictures with their kills and all that. That seemed more like a, a hunting trip rather than That's true. we're being attacked. We need to... You know, death, we need to destroy the the invading species. But it would it would be nice to have something like that to tie in. Raiding crops would make sense. I mean, he, he's right. We saw it in the first film, mm-hmm. and if you're paying attention to that and you came back to it, would you have noticed that in the second film? And that's one of the reasons why they're mad at the humans. I mean, it was just kind of that supposition that it was a killing field that they'd set up for. Like, it was it was a, a trap a that trap, they'd set up yeah. for the humans. Right. A honeypot. Maybe. I just I, a honeypot. I don't think that when you make a sequel to a film that you have to spell it out for a viewer who might not have seen your first film. However, you have to at least lay some groundwork for them to understand what you're talking about. So if I've not seen the first film and I've not seen that human raid, then I don't understand what you're talking about. You're just talking about superfluous garbage to me. But so, I like where he's going with I, it. I entirely like it. I've been the one at begging for people to explain how this works. And I think that at least ties into a great place. Now, Joe also goes into, and I'm not going to do it, spoilers for Richard. I'm going to keep this email because he gets into things and how it ties together. Into the new movies. Into yeah. the new movies. I can kind of see the top sentence there in all caps. Uh-huh. Richard, new film, spoiler alert. <laughs> well... <clears throat> Should I leave the room? No, 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 no. We'll what I'm actually going to we'll save this for a couple of years. I'm going to save it until we it. get there. But All what right. I'm going to say to him because he brings up something about Ursus, and I'm not going to say what. Joe, if you've not read the comic that came out recently that we've referred to, Ursus from Boom Studios, dude, I'm telling you, read it. It yeah. is because to me, and what we just talked about in the last minute, I can't help but juxtapose on my idea of what Zaius and Ursus's relationship is in that moment when they're grabbing each other. You know. I began to see where that that writer and that artist kind of went. I see something, something here. In those I could actions. Yeah, and so to me, it's a very rich thing. Now he does bring up that we perhaps should read the novel "War for the Planet of the Apes: Revelations." It's a prequel to the war film. I think uh, in that a, is that a novel novel or is there's a comic there's that a just comic, came I out? Think, right? Was there, yeah, there's a, either either it's out or it's about to come out. Yeah. War for the, yeah. And that's okay. about the prequel to yes. War, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I don't uh, know if this is what he's referring to. I don't or think not. it's out. I think I've ordered it. I think it's coming out soon. Well, if if it's Comic coming out wise. soon, then we're going to read it, aren't we? Yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. We still need to try to get the writer of Ursus on and see if he'd join us maybe for an in between. I think that'd be a fun conversation yeah. to have. Sean, you're the, uh, the you're the guest wrangler. Can you make that happen? Yes. After we finish this, and you are ready to guest host. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's the reference that we're going to take a little stop down because Todd has to have his shoulder repaired. But that's beside the point. Let's get on to Minute 72. Sean, why don't you tell us what's going on with Minute 72? All right, we're starting Minute 72 with an ape trying to control a horse that's out of control and ends with Zaius looking around in disbelief. And here we go in three, two, one. Oh, Spirit of the Lord, be the lives. We are still God's chosen. This is a vision, and it is a lie. As of minute 72, we've got three living humans, a psychor, a telepath, four dead humans, one dead ape, a shrewdness of apes, and a gaggle of humans. 
And like we were talking about in the earlier minute, uh, these apes kind of really lose their humanity and go ape shit instead, where they're just all <laughs> and jumping around and acting like monkeys. I mean, we don't. We, we'll like shriek and maybe cover our eyes in fear, but we're not hopping around and just going. <laughs> so, First, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Richard. So the audience did, doesn't really get to see. Um, a lot of, or they don't get to hear. In listening to the audio, you're not really told what's, what's happening, happening in this particular minute. And it's a minute in which Zaius kind of has that revelation. You hear the line, the spirit of the lawgiver lives, we are still God's chosen, and this is a vision, and it is a lie. And then we see Zaius ride into... The illusion. The yeah. illusion, if you will. And we're not really given much more... As Zaius kind of gets into the vision and gets around the the crucified apes, there's a moment where the lawgiver effigy just kind of topples over. Right. Just falls over. Um, It hits the ground, and then you hear the explosion, which you heard in the audio, and then the apes still just kind of react. And to your point, Sean, I think what was maddening about this particular (laughs) moment is that the the reaction of the apes could have been the same reaction that they used for the last five minutes of the apes. True. There was nothing to distinguish their reaction to me from any other minimum moment of their reaction. Like they didn't they didn't have like a, a choreographed. All right, so we're walking up. We're going to see the crucified apes. This is how I want you to react. We're now having the lawgiver. This is how I want you to react. We're now having you know the 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 falling of the lawgiver and the the dissipation of the image. This is how we need you to react. I found the the entire thing to be a crisis of character because you kept cutting to inconsequential apes for their reaction. Right. And the, when the two that I want to see the reaction to is Zaius and Ursus. Correct. So we, you know, I and I want to look at the big picture of the minute. I both love that Zaius finally acts like himself. You know, he gets to the line of "We are God's chosen." This vision—it's a lie. This is a vision, and it's a lie. That sounds more like he was in the last film. However, what was the impetus that made him ride into the flame? That he thought it was an illusion. Why didn't he? Okay, he, the last thing he said was, "I implore you to shoot them." When he when, when he, he said no, they were being why didn't dying. he take a gun? And um, why wasn't he riding up there to kill them? And they're gone. That would have suddenly that uh, you that's tie a good that point. Yeah, you tie these things together. He has no reason to ride. And if the telepaths can make people feel pain, even from an imaginary, why aren't they making him feel pain when he rides into the illusion? That's a good point. Well, there's only the one. Well, I'm assuming one guy does illusion, another guy does pain. But, well, there's, there, there's of the council of, of five, I forgot what they were called, the, only the one was the one that actually kind of administered pain. Well, of that council, we don't know if they don't have a whole separate section set up where we've got this hell division that's the pain core and over here is the illusion core uh, pain this core. is the the pleasure core and all that kind of stuff but like, i but i will i will say and i can't talk about it now i guess i can say whatever you want when we come back to those characters that one character that administers pain is not in that group of people oh okay. really all right Mm-mm. i didn't notice that it's a group of four hmm. and that person is not there they said bitch you didn't do a good job you're out but that might explain the lack of pain, pain being, being brought true. in this moment. If if the people that are administering the visions are the four that we see when we come back. So anyway, sorry. I, I just find it as exciting as I, I find this entire idea and the possibilities that could have been here. This minute suffers grotesquely from, again, a horrific selection of shots where we see the same type of reaction shot again and again. There is nothing to differentiate. They should have had some apes running away. Yes. They should have had some apes down on their, their knees. Yeah, that would, have been, that would have been a great reaction, seriously. Like, just different reactions to what was happening at different moments. I even wanted an over-the-shoulder. You know, you could do a, a either a backward projection in front of them. You could do a any kind of... Uh, mat, matting projection type shot where we see the flames and the lawgiver and over the shoulders of the gorilla. So we're, we're putting them together. We see the reaction as they're all cowering down, anything like that. But all we see are flat shots again and again of about five or six gorillas at once. 
And it just becomes this repetitive nonsense. Uh, and, and the masks aren't always that great. They're horrible. Either. Yeah. The, but, the, but at least they're all supposed to be shocked. That, so the big orgasm face they all have at least plays off. Sense. Oh, oh. Or when when uh, 